Okay, let's go ahead and reduce this fraction. Now this word reduce, uh, there's another word for it and that is simplify, but they pretty much mean the same thing. We want to reduce this fraction down into the smallest fraction possible or simplify this fraction down into the smallest fraction possible. And the kind of the approach or the way we think about it, here we're obviously dealing with numbers, kind of arithmetic. This is certainly a, base, a basic math skill that you uh, definitely need to know. But what we're going to be doing here, the approach to reduce a fraction, is the same uh, approach that we would uh, reduce a fraction in algebra when we're using variables. So this is very, very important stuff. Not too difficult, and there's um, kind of different paths that you can take to get to the right answer. So we're going to get into this problem here in a second. And when you uh, finish this video, hopefully you will be an expert at reducing fractions. Very, very important math skill indeed. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. But basically, um, uh, I have 100 plus different math courses. You can find a link to my math help program following the link in the description of this video. But uh, I have 100 plus different math courses. Uh, certainly have all the big courses like pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. Going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly, college algebra, etc. Uh, so I have all those main courses that probably a lot of you out there are taking. But I have many, many specialty courses because a lot of people are studying mathematics uh, and they're not in a math course. What they're doing is actually uh, reviewing math skills to prepare for a particular exam. It could be uh, tests like the GED, SAT, ACT, a teacher certification exam, a nursing entrance exam, the ACUPLACER, college placement, uh, CLEP exam, all these different types of exams. There's, there's millions of people every year that take you know, these very, very important exams and a lot's, you know, writing on whether you pass these particular exams. So uh, a lot of these exams, a lot of these exams obviously have a lot of math on them. So I built out custom curriculum, uh, math test prep courses. Take me many years to build all this out, high quality stuff. So if you're taking one of these exams, go to my site and check out my course uh, library. I likely have it. And if I don't have it, drop me a line in my contact form and I'll see what I can do for you. Now, um, I also do a lot of work with homeschoolers. So if you're an independent learner, have a great homeschool learning system. Then obviously, if you're in a class right now and you're struggling, let's say you're taking pre-algebra, I can certainly help you out as well. Now, the one thing that you want to be doing to help yourself out is be t uh, is taking great math notes. Over decades of teaching math, this is kind of my golden rule of mathematics, and that is those students who take great math notes almost always end up uh, with excellent math grades. And then reverse is true. Those students who don't take math notes, maybe they're just not into taking math notes. They're like, nah, you know what? Uh, the notes aren't, you know, they're just not that important, okay? Or maybe sometimes every other Tuesday they take notes and they're like, yeah, I'll take notes here. I'll take some notes there. Uh, you know, my best friend has better notes than I do. I remember everything by just, you know, I have a photographic memory. I've heard all of the excuses. Of course, I myself was not a great student back in the good old days. And if there were cell phones, smartphones around when I was going to school, I don't even know if I'd graduate because there's a huge amount of distractions already. Then you throw in all this technology and it gets even crazier. So the only way you're going to be able to focus, okay, is to engage in this note-taking activity. It's just completely... Um, required for you to master this. Uh, believe me on this one, just push the I believe button and get into your notes. But as you improve in your note taking, I offer detailed comprehensive notes to include pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into reducing uh, or simplifying this particular fraction. So let's start off with an uh, easier. Uh, problem. Let's say I have uh, 4 over 8. Okay, so here's a fraction 4 over 8. And hopefully all of you out there can uh, reduce this fraction. So if you said hmm, 4 over 8, that's equal to 1 half, I would say you are awesome. Give yourself a smiley face and an A plus. Okay, you're definitely on the right track. So this fraction 4 over 8 is equivalent to this other fraction 1 half. Now this guy here it's simpler. Now from here, this four, uh, 4 over 8, we went to 1 half. This process, okay, the reason we're able to write this, this is reducing. Okay, we kind of reduced it down. 
all right? Like something gets getting reduced down. Same thing when we're reducing a fraction, but I also like the term simplify. In algebra, we don't use the word reduce fractions. We kind of use re, uh, simplify. So we're going to simplify the fraction board. Obviously, it's reducing as well. But um, these two numbers, these two values are equivalent, okay? So if you were to go into your calculator and take 4 divided by 8 or 1 divided by 2, we would still get the uh, decimal equivalent 0.5, okay? we just got two different ways of writing it. Now, let's take this 4 over 8. What if I wrote this as 40 over um, 80 or 400 over 800? I mean, who wants to be writing all these extra zeros around? That's like a lot of work, okay? So instead of doing that, let's just write something nice and easy and simplify our life. So that's the whole reasoning behind simplifying. And you need to know it's not like an optional thing. It's not like, yeah, I'll just give you my answer. And uh, you, Mr. Teacher, can go ahead and simplify if you like. Here is the right answer. It doesn't work that way. Most math teachers are going to expect you to fully simplify and reduce your answers, or you'll get points taken off, and then you end up with a sad face, and you're like, boy, I should listen to that guy on YouTube. Um, yeah, i got to simplify. Yes, you have to simplify. When you can, you need to, right? All right, so let's talk about what's going on here. 4 over 8, uh, this is equal to 1 half. So what, uh, what occurred, okay? Well, what you're really doing uh, when we're simplifying fractions is we're looking at the factors of each of these uh, uh, values. Now, this is called the numerator, just a quick review, and this is called the denominator, and this is obviously a fraction. So what we want to do is look at the factors of the numerator and denominator. In other words, how can we break up four in terms of numbers being but we can multiply together such that they're equal to four so four if you think about it is what well that's two times two okay so that is four and eight is what well you can uh do this a couple different ways this is two times four or two times two times two but we're going to leave it as two times four for a second so this this is four over eight so I have the fraction 4 over 8, but I can write this as it, uh, in terms of its factors. Okay, This is what we need to be thinking about, factors. And factoring all right, is the action of breaking up these numbers uh, right here, like the numerator and denominator, into uh, these particular factors. Okay, So we oftentimes want to just break down these numbers as far as we can go, and that's called something uh, called prime factors. All right, so if you want to know more about this, by the way, you want to check out my um, pre-algebra playlist. I have a lot of stuff on basic mathematics. But uh, just so you know, we're thinking here, well, 4, how can we break it up? Well, 2 times 2, how can we break up 8, 2 times 4? Now, once we have these values factored, okay, and uh, again, we like to be able to prime factor, but I'm just going to make my point here. What we want to be looking to do is identify any uh, of this any factors of the same in between the numerator and denominator. So for example, I have two times two. So I have a two here, and I'm looking to see if I have any other twos down here. Now, if you notice, you're thinking, well, I have a one two right there, all right? Well, what you can do, okay, we can cross cancel one factor for another factor, okay? One for one. So I have two twos here and one two here. This bottom two can't take out these two twos, just one for one, okay, just like that. So you're saying, okay, well, this simplifies. In other words, these numbers can go away. But now let's think about this four here, okay, and let's think about prime factors. So four, I can really uh, write four as two times two. So here's two times two. So two times two times two is eight, and four is two times two. All right, so now I have everything I need to fully simplify and reduce this fraction. So here's a 2 and here's a 2. These guys can go away. And then I have another 2. And I'm like, oh, I have another 2 down here. Okay, 1 for 1. This is called cross-canceling. Okay, and I'm canceling out one factor for one factor. They, they, obviously, the like factors. So now I'm left with what? A 2 down here in the bottom. I have a 2. And some of you are like, hey, I don't have anything up here. Well, you always have one, okay? There's always a one. We don't write it, but there's always a one. So when there's nothing up there, the, the remaining factor is one. So I'm left with one over two, 
Okay, so this is what we want to be um, doing when we're considering uh, factoring or excuse me, reducing a fraction. We want to be looking at the factors, okay? How can we break up these numbers into uh, a product, something times something else that will get us back to this? So that's the general idea in terms of simplifying or reducing a fraction. Now let's move on to the problem, okay? Now I kind of um, already did this just to save us a bit of time, but what's not so clear here is we have 248 and 860. We're like, well, how do I factor these guys? Well, this is, if you don't have a calculator, you're going to have to do some kind of experimenting. Now, one of the things that will really help you out is knowing something called the divisibility rules. Okay, I um, have a couple videos, again, in my pre-algebra playlist on the divisibility rules. Well, basically, we got to break up these values, okay? And you have to say to yourself, hmm, what can I divide these numbers into? How can I break these up, okay, into uh, factors, right? Just start with basic obvious factors first. So let's take a look at 248, okay, first. So 248 ends with 8, okay? Anytime a number ends with an even number, it's going to be divisible by 2, okay? So you can just do the long division here and take 2 and divide it into 248. Now, if you wanted to cheat a little bit, you could use your calculator, as long as you're writing all, all this out. This is the kind of important part here. Um, but you would be expected to be able to do this without a calculator, okay? So just here saying, okay, 248, I can break it up. Okay, this is an even number. I, I know 2 is going to go into it. So you divide 2 into 248. I have 124 times 2. Okay, excellent. All right, so this is just the start. What we're going to want to do is continue to uh, factor these uh uh, values in the numerator and denominator, but we'll just start nice and easy. Now, some of you could factor this differently, all right? You can use different factors. You could have uh, used four, for example, um, and it went a different route. So that's why I'm saying when it comes to factoring, especially with larger values, some of you could uh, break up or find your factors this way, this way, this way. It doesn't make a difference. We should all end at the same answer, okay? So I'm just kind of going nice and easy right now. Now let's take a look at 860. Anytime you have a number that ends with zero, like this, it's gonna be um, divisible by 10. So 86 times 10, boom, there's 860. So that's nice and easy right there. So let's just kind of do this step by step. Now, off, you know, I wrote 10 down. I'm like, okay, I know that's two times five, but let's just you know, write one thing at a time. Now, what you can do is you can uh, factor uh, all these numbers, you know, completely off to the side and then write all the factors. But I'm just going to kind of show you the process. All right. So, um, you know, I'm showing you the process this way. So we were able to break it up this way, uh, 124 times 2 over 86 times 10. But let's keep, you know, uh, going further. Let's take a look now at 124. Let's get back to the numerator. So that ends in 4. Okay. So I'm thinking, no, that's divisible by 2 as well. It's even. All right, so if you take 2, or you take 124 divided by 2, you're going to get 62 times 2. That's going to be 124. Then don't let's not forget our other 2 over there. Now, 86, okay, I'm looking at that uh, 6. That's an even number. So I can also divide that by 2. And it's, you know, you want to play around with this. If you want to try other numbers, you can use the divisibility rules for sure to help you out. But we're just kind of breaking this up. So 86 is going to be 43 times 2, and then 10 will be 2 times 5. So just kind of breaking things up. And at this point, uh, I think this is a good opportunity right here to go ahead and start cross-canceling, because I see a lot of 2s. So no, um, there's no reason for us to continue to kind of carry these 2s right now. We can kind of get rid of them. So this 2 can cross-cancel that 2, and then this 2 can cross-cancel that 2. So now I'm just left with 62 in the numerator, 43 and 5 in the denominator. Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, we're already uh, made this fraction simpler. So now we have 62 over 43 times 5. So 62, we got that even uh, number right here, so I could break that up by 2. So 62 divided by 2 is 31. Okay, so this is going to, 62 is equal to 31 times 2. Okay, and 43, uh, what you have to do is you have to ask yourself, all right, 43, is it divisible by this number or this number or this number? you got to really kind of play around with it. 
But if you try enough numbers, you're going to determine that it's prime. In other words, there's no numbers that go into 43. And 5 is also prime. Okay, So the only numbers that go into it is 1 in itself. So we're kind of stuck. So 43 is prime and 5 is prime. But we wouldn't, you know, some of you out there, this is not so obvious. Okay, You have to kind of try some numbers with 43 to determine, hey, is it prime or not? But it is prime. So 31 is prime, 2 is prime. In other words, we can't go any further uh, with factors other than what we have here. So we have no like factors. Okay, So meaning we're done. Even though we could break up the 62, we, it's not helping us out. So really, the simplest we can write this fraction is 62 over 43 times 5. So now we'll have to figure out what 43 times 5 is. That's 215. So we have 62 in our numerator. So our original fraction was 248 over 860. And we reduced it down, simplified it to 62 over 215. Now, if you're able to do that problem, and even in your own way, definitely give yourself a big happy face, an A plus, and a 100%, that's excellent, okay? But more importantly, I want you to understand the process, the mechanics of doing this, all right? Uh, because this is going to uh, be the same process as you progress into algebra. You gotta know arithmetic. A lot of times uh, students think, oh yeah, this is all basic math. Well, basic math is the foundation for algebra. And in algebra, basically we're doing basic arithmetic. You know, I'm kind of simplifying here. Uh, but instead of using numbers, we're using variables, but the procedures are the same. The concepts, uh, the strategies, techniques are the strange, are, are not the strange, the same. <laughs> so um, don't dismiss how important, you know, your basic math skills are. And as we get away, you know, from doing these problems, you know, our skills go down, especially uh, being that we're using calculators all the time. Okay, but you got to know how to reduce fractions or simplify fractions and uh, conceptually understand the importance of factoring and factors, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right. So if this video was helpful, if you enjoyed this video, if you're like, yeah, you know, I feel great about my ability to reduce fractions, please consider smashing that like button. That certainly helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great place for someone like myself who is obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable way so I can keep you motivated to, to learn. Nothing's worse than you know, having all this math anxiety or, you know, this kind of thought in the back of your head, like, I'm terrible at math. I hate math. I don't want to do it. Listen, you got to let all that go. What you need is to take a deep breath, start building your skills, uh, skill sets up one at a time. And it takes work. It takes effort. I'm not going to tell you that there is uh, shortcuts, but you can do it. It's just like climbing stairs. You could just one step at a time. Okay. All right. So uh, if you like my teaching style and you want more uh, like my additional best help, certainly check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.